marble is a very special uh, material and I have actually written it down because it sounds pretty uh, sophisticated and complicated. So um, marble is a non-foliated metamorphic rock composed of recrystallized carbonite materials like calcite, dolomite or argonite. Um, That sounds special. It is. Uh, it truly is. If you if you look at the reference, as we always try to do, um, you will find that there are very very different uh, tones in marble. There are this 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 black marble, which is really beautiful. Um, also yellowish marble, um, reddish marble, uh, and this greenish marble, which <clears throat> actually is a question of what it consists of 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 the materials that uh, that. The stone is composed of. The, yeah, exactly, yeah. that formed it uh, after the time. We've decided to go for a more classical cream colored look on the staircase, on the stairs here, and then go for a bit more um, exotic uh, look for greenish uh, tint marble with some orange um, marbling. Also, we have to keep in mind the, the colors of the Horus that you saw in the, in the previous videos, and uh, since you know a base should not really draw too much attention away from the model. Um, it would be better if it's uh, just a good background and uh, helps to transport the colors uh, and fit everything together. When you look at the palette cam, you will see the colors that I've mixed uh, mixed here. Um, the cream color will be somewhere in between these two, um, with a, obviously an impact in the more cream uh, color, and the the greenish tone will be uh, will be somewhere in this turquoise and jade colored. Um, area here. For the shadows we will go for more granite uh, colored uh, look to pull it all together and maybe we will have a slight impact of the red because the Horus itself is also um, you know sports a lot of um, lighting effects uh, with the red. Okay the first step on this base then will be to um, to put a very smooth um, first base coat color on it and uh, I think we will go for the airbrush for now. As you can see, we um, have put some masking tape on the lower part of the, of the base, which is always a clever thing to do after priming the, the base uh, black. Um, this way you will, um, you will save yourself one step of putting black after you painted it, because yeah. the paint will come here, so it's, 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 it's quite clever to do this. Another thing that might come as a surprise for some of you is that I always uh, use some satin varnish in my um, in my airbrush colors because um, you know when you when you have already some experience with airbrushing you might notice that you have a very rough and uh, very matte uh, result and you can you can avoid this pretty easily by adding this like dusty surface by adding some satin varnish or gloss varnish to the color it's up to um, Experimentation actually, the, the amount of um, you know how much you mix uh, now in, but you know I always give give it some some drips like this, should be should be good, and um, mix it inside the cup like this. Okay, that's a no one. All right, so now we take oh, <laughs> some of you might remember a very important thing safety first. Yep. Our trusty mask and we have actually upgraded to. Uh, begin model so <laughs> it's very important to have a mask uh, airbrushing is really not something to be uh, joking about so yeah i will put this on and then we will um, start We need more color, especially also to uh, catch these dark uh, areas underneath the stairs. So I think I will add a slightly different tone, a bit more brown, which is also um, good because that way we get a color variation into the into the stones and they are a bit different. But you can also already already see how uh, well the the two uh, K foundation um, helped us to build already here a little uh, light transition on this uh, stairs. So yeah, I will refill my um, my airbrush with some, some of the base uh, tone and as I said, I will add a bit more brown. I will go for the for a little bit of the Camry Brown from the Citadel Old Foundation range. They are very good to, um, you know, to do exactly this, to, to create a very um, harmonic uh, first layer, uh, first base layer. So I really like to use them for the, um, for the first coat. Okay, now just a little bit brown in here. 
and as always, the first thing that I put in my airbrush is uh, water. You know, the first thing and <laughs> the last thing that should come out of your airbrush is water because it cleans the whole system and that way you avoid clogging and uh, all these things. You also see that um, now I just blow air, so it's um, in order to speed up the drying uh, process, so it's not hazardous. I can do this without a mask. And also, if you have not noticed yet, um, the space it can be actually removed, <laughs> and uh, that way you can reach these areas better. So we'll continue to do this, and also we will um, do the, just the same thing with the, with the greenish tone, and then we'll be back when this is finished. Um, as you can see, I changed the, um, the color a bit. I uh, checked back on the reference and I saw that uh, more cream color would be more natural. So I added some, uh, some more um, of the bleach bone cream color to the, to the, basic, uh, to the base coat mix. To start working some, um, some uh, transitions, sh some shadows into these stones and this is the important part to do this individually, to treat every stone like an individual because um, the marbling will have a direction and we don't want the direction to float from the top to the bottom in one line but to make a more, bit more random appearance uh, of the marble. If you look at the palette, um, we have the base tone here. Um, these two cups are my backup cups, so whenever I spray and work with the airbrush, I have these two cups ready with a little dropper and I remove uh, recess uh, color and put them in my, uh, in my backup cups so I can always com come back to a, to a base, coat, uh, base tone that I have. Matt's famous backup cup. Mm, yeah. <laughs> For the shadow color, we will use, um, we will use something uh, from, the, from the Italieri paint range. Um, it's called uh, Fiat Nocciola Chiaro. And uh, flat marone mimieto. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's uh, horrible <laughs> Italian, but they are very good to create this first uh, slight uh, gradient into the into the base tone. Okay. So I take the base tone, and it's important to to be very subtle about it, and uh, not to um, to or go too crazy. Them. Yeah. Yes. So yes, we take this. So it's not too strong, basically. It's just a, a hint of. Yes. Okay. Yes. As I said, these, um, these um, tiles of marble as individual tiles. So for example this here, I will place the color here, clean the brush and slowly incorporate it into the surface up there, like this. It doesn't have to be a perfect transition either, so if, if it keeps a little bit of natural grain, so to say, it's it's totally okay with, with the marble, isn't it? Yes. Yes, actually this uh, extra, you know, um, tones and, and shades and, and uh, this roughness is actually sometimes quite good. Um, yeah, because marble is a natural um, material and therefore it's not 100%, uh, uh, I don't know, perfect. You know, there's always something going on in, in the marble. We have to understand marble as a material that, um, that consists of layers. And um, the layers, they are also semi-transparent. Like they are, um, they, you know, the light comes shining through. Um, it's a bit like with wax or with, with yeah, skin. Like you can really look into the material. Yes, like this. It's not a, you know, um, a certain direction, uh, as I said, it's not zenithal theory uh, that the light comes from here, therefore they all have to be the same. It's more like marking them down and uh, adding some, some shadow to them um, from, from one side. Yeah, you're basically not painting light and shadow at, at all right now, you're, you're yes. just uh, giving the, the stone the tone it has to have and the transition it's uh, supposed to have in, in itself without any lighting effect or anything. Exactly. Oh, yeah, Matti himself is quite a good uh, painter, I think, too. <laughs> <laughs> he just never uses... He just has to practice. <laughs> but he knows everything, actually, about it. Yes. 
Yeah, but uh, a lot of that comes from observation, I guess, right? I mean, if you if you observe the material. Well, wood is pretty similar, and uh, yeah, I guess part of sculpting is also observing the material and how it's composed, so. It is a slightly different deal with um, with these um, because they um, they consist of one um, piece of marble. Uh, you know they're not set together. They're all made like carved out of one solid piece. Yeah. So with these, I would go more classical, um, like try to 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 incorporate some shadows from below, and um, you know more like a classical center light at this point. You put the light here. Clean the brush, not with your mouth, <laughs> and then you you draw it up. Yeah, the handrail, I think I will also go um, with a bit darker hue. You can also see the, the foundation. It, um, yes, a bit lighter on top. Didn't it? Yeah, I made it a bit lighter there. Um, so, yeah, we will do the same. Um, I think a bit less of the, um, of the sand color, as you can see here on the palette. It would be better to do it a bit more on the lighter uh, side of things and then put it down here. And then drag it up also the same fashion we did before. Keep in mind this is the the first step of trying to you know build uh, to to break this uh, to uh, surface up. After that we will go to a more classical like the, the marbling effect, and yeah. this will also help to really to break it up even more. Okay, but you see quite well on this slab uh, how it's meant to look. Um, I will continue on all the others and also on the back, and uh, then we'll be back for the next step. Here we are back um, after painting the, uh, the structure on to these tiles individually. Uh, also on those columns you see um, the light is working really well or begins to work really well already. The next step will be to, um, to lighten uh, some areas up again with, uh, with some uh, subtle highlight. For this uh, I will mix some white and some cream color into the, the basic mix that we used before. Okay. And um, we will apply it on these uh, columns. The, the important thing that we want to achieve here is uh, really a, a pretty smooth, um, pretty smooth result um, that that serves as the good. Uh, starting point for uh, for the marbling. That okay, comes. so it's just a very very subtle and soft lightening uh, effect you put on there now. And yes. Also to break uh, these um, these surfaces up again uh, with some something that happens there, you know. Give them a more stone like character. Yes. And actually, here is a special part. Um, this is actually mar marble that has been broken off, um, and it's a, it's a, when you look at marble, um, this surf these surfaces here they would be polished and they would be very shiny and uh, pretty perfect. But um, if it uh, as, as soon as it breaks, it actually it creates these rough um, surfaces that are mostly also a bit uh, different from the from the tone from the color. What I've seen, uh, they are. Um, more more bright actually going into a white so we really want to um, to make the, uh, them a bit uh, brighter than actually the other part of the I think that's that's an effect of the of the rough surface uh, the marble has when it's not polished mm -hmm. that, it, that the light breaks in so many little points that mm -hmm. that it looks uh, brighter lighter mm -hmm.
And again, the technique with the, you know, where you clean the brush and then drag the color uh, over, it's an important thing that you have to practice also, um, that you place the color and um, like here, this edge maybe, and um, then you clean the brush, pull the color down here. Also, you should not be afraid to go over the shadows in this part here. You won't really cover them up because uh, the brush is loaded with uh, with water, and so it's uh, quite diluted. So mm -hmm. you would rather create a transition than to cover it really. In this uh, area here, you see that there's some lettering here, and um, for this, you need to be um, pretty precise, and it's good to kind of put little uh, spots of light underneath the underneath them because here really the surface is um, carved and while we have to be careful um, at the you know not to to make these appear like cracks uh, to to put a highlight here uh, because they are not not really cracks they are cracks in a, yeah, it's a flat there. surface with uh, yeah with a color variation in there. here it is a crack actually and this is why we have to kind of uh, accentuate them accordingly uh, and the more time we will spend with uh, carefully putting some lights on the right edges of, of the lettering the better it will look so yeah i think i will continue to to put more of these uh, little light um, uh, edges and these, these little lights on on the whole base and then we will be back for the next step the modeling itself welcome back <laughs> as you see the the light on the Columns uh, really looks pretty nice. Also, this side, uh, the shadow is more extreme on this side here. But this is exactly what we wanted to do. And for our next trick, we will uh, need something. Um, Which like, is? Like this. <laughs> it's a little sponge that um, like you know we ripped out of this uh, piece of larger sponge. And, um, and like blister foam or something. Blister foam, yeah. Perfect, perfect for that. Exactly. So as you see on the palette, we mix this um, this area here with some of the um, the base tone from the um, just from the pot, and then some tone that we want to incorporate into this uh, the surface now uh, for the marble uh, for the marbling effect. Okay. And uh, yeah, now we we take some of that on the sponge with our uh, we have some pliers here. The thing that we have to do now is the uh, special technique uh, that has, not, has no name yet. You have to prepare your brush and put it somewhere near your, uh, your, your, your hand. And then you see the, you can always test it here on your, on your hand. Uh, that's why, you know, I always end up looking like a colored dog, as Ben would put it. So yeah, we demonstrate it on this uh, lowest uh, stair here. And also it's important to, um, to keep the, the brush uh, somewhere near, nearby, because we have to be quick with uh, this technique. So now we, try, we put some of it here and use the brush to eliminate um, some of the, some of the do spots that were too big and that we don't want to have. We have to be pretty quick with that. Mm. But you can see that the result will be that you have these little, little dots that are just a bit different than, um, than the base tone and this is exactly what we want to have. So just some color variation in, in the, the stone. Yes, exactly. And it is important not to overdo it. Um, at this step, just have some of the something that uh, happens here, actually. Yeah, but you can see it comes uh, together really nicely and also incorporates this little pink uh, appearance to it. You can also, you know, experiment with with some uh, brownish tones, more glossy tones. Uh, the only thing is that you should not uh, depart too far from the base tone uh, with whatever you do, because it will just look uh, too uh, out of place. Yes, too artificial. Okay, same on the on the handrail. Decent touches here and 
there. Take your super clean, super awesome brush again. Fade it up. Yeah, you can see here. This is the look that you really want to want to achieve here. Yeah, that looks already like marble. Again, I will continue on the on this side, and we'll be back for the next step in a second. Now we finally come to the marbling itself, to the, to the lines that everyone knows uh, when thinking about marble. And there is one neat uh, thing or like trick to do uh, when you when you're not so sure where you know where to put the the lines and how it will look. You can use the pencil to line uh, to to mark down the lines before you paint them. Uh, actually, which is always very good. Um, yeah, to really to try out the composition and see how the whole thing will look. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is again not to make it too uh, regular. But like it, there will be no lines running from the top to the bottom. Yeah, so it's each tile on its own. Yes. When you make mistakes, you can also easily uh, erase them with uh, with this tip. Um, so maybe it would be good to have some lines here also. Yeah, exactly. That's one thing to keep in mind. Is it's, uh, it's similar to wood. If if you cut the marble and the vein goes through there, it will show on two sides and not just on one. So you can't paint a completely different pattern on uh, on the front side of the stone. And you have to respect what you painted on the other side. And also here on the <clears throat> on these um, columns. Don't overdo it, just put some. Sometimes only one of these veins is really enough. Uh, you don't need hundreds of them. Uh, I can, you can already see how it will look differently with the, with the line on. All right, so I will continue to mark down these lines on the other side also, and uh, yeah, then we'll be back. So as you can see, we marked down the lines uh, that uh, we will now have to, to put in. Also, I added these, um, these lines here of these stones because this is a flat surface usually, and it needs to still to kind of come in some segments. Usually, when you if you also ah, I mean you separated it just to not be just one massive block. Exactly, and okay. if it's not in the sculpt, you need to paint it. This here that you see on the palette is the uh, color that I want for the for the veins. And now for this step for separating these uh, quarry blocks, it's uh, rather on the thick side, and not so uh, dilute. It's like a layer. Yeah, with this I will simply separate them and draw over the, the lines that I have uh, put on with the pencil. Like this. And also this one here. Now we will paint the, the veins. We do this in two steps. The first step will be marking them down with uh, something that is like a glaze. It's not a layer, but it's, um, it's fairly diluted. You can see it here uh, on the finger, like this. Okay. With this, we will um, create a, something like an area surrounding the, the vein. And after that, we will follow up with a very sharp and pretty dark um, trace of this vein. So as if this vein would scatter. Yeah. So here. Okay, so I guess the trick here would be to make it really subtle again. Yes. Okay. It's important. Um, we don't want black lines because these are not cracks. Again, um, they are part of the marble effect, so they need to be subtle.
Also, if you take a really up close look to marble, um, you'll see that those lines are not like a really dark line. They're composed out of uh, many, many, many little small dark dots. So if they fade a little to the sides, it's, uh, it enhances the look of the marble even more. You have to kind of um, create a kind of mesh of these veins, like a, like a mesh system that um, folds on, on top of this. I think we will continue on all these lines here and then we'll be back for the, for the thicker line. Here we are back. Um, this is the result after some, I don't know, a couple of minutes of painting. Um, you can see that uh, here, especially, the, the lines start to really come out nicely and all those subtle little um, lines that are marked down really help to create a, a good effect. As you see here on the palette cam, I used uh, some orange, Mars orange from the scale model uh, color, uh, from scale color range. And uh, now I'm adding some tank brown um, and thus have this, you know, pretty dark uh, color. And this uh, step actually, we have to be very precise, um, also not to overdo it uh, and only put this line at some places, not everywhere, because this would not look good. Um, we have to be very precise and try to follow the, the lines that we have marked down uh, earlier. And uh, when you look carefully, you can see uh, that the pencil is still a bit visible and we try to, uh, to cover all that up now with this uh, step. And again, it's better not to, to draw lines, but to uh, have certain dots of that uh, color. So a certain irregularity is uh, preferred. Yes. And if it's too much, you can erase it also with the gypsy brush that you have, of course, always lying near nearby. So again, don't try to trace them all. Um, only add some some points of interest, I would say, here and there, um, some you know stronger features, but that's it actually. It's like as if the concentration of that certain material is stronger in certain parts, and there you go darker, and in other areas it's not as dark and then it turns lighter again. Looks quite natural I think. The two things that I would do now would be um, to correct the edges with the foundation, uh, with the color that the base color that I used and some white. You see for example here this corner has lost its um, its its, uh, its shine or its, um, its plasticity and you can um, Bring it back when you when you add some some features like that, so it looks more shiny. And after that, actually, I will go around everywhere and, and put that on. Um, I will add some satin varnish on the surface. It's not a gloss varnish though. This is important because if you put a gloss varnish, it will look wet. But if it's a satin varnish and also um, used decently, it will absolutely help to create the effect of of um, a certain yeah like a polished look you know i think i'll just continue and we'll be back um with the finished uh, with the finished look and um then we will go continue with the green marble okay